Well, I've had a bit of a disaster this week as I planned to go out onto the Derbyshire Wye and do a dry fly podcast um, as there's been some good hatches of uh, granum caddis and fish have been rising and then of course as soon as I came to do it we had a uh, plunge in temperatures, we've had hail, we've had snow, we've had an easterly wind and so I've given up this week of, uh, of trying to do it. However, what I've done instead is come on the Birchinley Fly Fishing Club water, um, which is the upper part of the River Derwent, just below Lady Bar Reservoir. And um, I'm going to have a bash on here. Um, and I'm going to try on a dry. I'm stood in the stream at the minute. I, I can't see anything rising as yet, but there's quite a few flies around. Um, I've got my little seven foot rod. I've got about eight, nine foot a leader on, including a 6x tippet. And I've gone with a very small universal barbless olive, which is one of our Wild River uh, barbless flies. I'm just going to prospect up the river. I've got about 50 feet of river in front of me, very rocky. Um, there's lots of different lines of bubbles and current coming down in it kind of winds its way down and then there's a big waterfall at the top well I'll, I'll have to stop fishing when I get near there um, but it's very pretty I've got the big stone bridge behind me the Yorkshire Bridge so I'm going to fish upstream let's get some line out and then we'll, we'll give it a go but I've, I've been stood here for about five or ten minutes um, before starting the podcast and I've not seen anything rise which goes against all my um, advice I always give to people which is if there's nothing rising probably start with a wet but I've done th- three or four wet fly fishing podcasts now and I want to have a, a go at fishing with a dry so you never know I'll prospect up and see if anything uh, pops up and says hello let's work a bit of line out and I'll start close in cast nicely anyway it's a very very light leader and very light fly so it's lovely to cast Right, so what I'm going to do is, is concentrate on the bits of current where the food is concentrated. So the little lines of faster current as it snakes around the rocks. Any of the little areas where we get a white bubble stream coming down the river as well. They're the bits that the fish are likely to be holding in. And we'll uh, just prospect up the different lines and see if anything comes up. So I'm gradually going to going to pick my way upstream and there's lots of lovely mossy rocks in front of me and there's some wagtails oops nearly in the tree wagtails sat on them and um, there looks like a combination of flies in the air I've not seen any upwings it looks like it's mainly midges at the minute but um, I've got quite a lot of experience on fishing this river and there is a decent hatch of olives and the, the trout in here just they do really go um, crackers for those olives and this bit of river is all wild brown trout there's no grayling up here it's too acidic for the grayling uh, and there's no stocking either so it's it's all wild fish And this uh, it's surprising actually, this fly is ever so small and it's very, very dark olive colour, but you can see it very easily. I'm just trying to keep as much fly line off the water as possible at the minute just to reduce any drag on the fly so it gives it a natural presentation. And the wagtail doesn't want to move, it's obviously used to humans pottering about now I might have just seen a fish rising upstream actually trying to keep one eye on the fly that I'm casting and in my peripheral vision another eye on the stream ahead of me just in case anything pops up but there's a a glide of steadier water and I'm sure out the corner of my eye I just saw a little disturbance in it which made a mental note of where that is and uh, there's some olives hatching now as well that's good that might start bringing them up a bit yes it was a rise i've just seen it again 
So it's in the bubble stream and it's about 20 feet ahead of me. So I'm going to slowly fish my way up to it and hopefully get a cast over it without spooking it. I've been a silly boy and not brought my wading stick again. And um, it's not too bad here, actually. I know the river fairly well. Not like the last podcast when I, uh, I got stuck. Uh, the wagtail's gone now. Right, I can probably just about start to cover this fish. Very slowly work my way up behind it. Oh, there's another rise there just to the right as well. That's a bit closer, so I'll cover that rise first. That's moved upstream, I can see it. Right, that's right on it. Bit of drag that time, let's try again. Ah, it's dragged again. So what's happening here is that there's a couple of different speeds of current the fly line is going across. Um, and it's making the fly drag. So I'm going to put a slack, slack line cast in. And I just give the rod a wiggle as I cast. And it should just put some slack into the line, which means that the, the fly line isn't going to pull the fly down. In fact, there's, I think there's two or three fish in this little run. There we go. Oh, I missed it. Little monkey. He's come up for it again and shied away at the last minute. Let's try another one. Uh, they're only little fish, these, nothing big, but... Come on, that's going to go right over him. Yeah, oh, I've missed it again. Oh. This is the, the joy of dry fly fishing when you... They're taking and you strike and there's nothing there mind you this it's a size I think it's an 18 this so it's a fairly small fly that should cover him again now it's dragged let's try again I might have put him down now. I might have spooked him I've had two takes at the fly and I've... no he's still coming up go on this time Oh, we've got him. Now he's off again. <laughs> now that was strange. That took just as I was picking off the cast and uh, didn't actually see the take. As, as I picked off the cast, he was on the end. He was only about three inches. Only a sprat. Let's try again. Yes, we've got him this time. Oh, he's bigger than I thought, actually, this one. Oh, he's a beauty. Let me bring him in. There he is in the net. That's a lot bigger than I thought. But the, I only thought he was a sprat, but there's, a, there's obviously a couple working that glide there. He's about 10 inches, something like that, but he's absolutely pristine. Beautiful wild fish. Buttery yellow underneath, and then red spots, and lovely dark brown on the back. And Right, we'll just slip the, uh, slip the fly out, and we'll... Pop him back. The beauty of this um, this bit of river is because it's got the the dam wall that Lady Bow is only what are we? I don't know, quarter of a mile upstream from here. The water temperature is fairly regulated. It's um, it's one of the few bits of river where if we have a heavy, really heavy, um, big shower of rain, then it doesn't often get washed out here because it's so close to the, the dam. There's not a lot of time to get any runoff in the river. So when all the rest of the derwent is too high and brown, this is off, often still fishable. Right, I've got to sort this uh, fly out now because a big clump of weed around it and it's that green snotty weed that's a pain to get off. And, it's just going to drown the fly. It might even be worth just taking this fly off, putting it on the patch and putting a fresh one on. 
the fish that were rising in front of me were feeding on midges actually, not, um, not olives, but these universal flies, they, they do a great job of imitating all sorts of different species and when they're feeding actively like that, you don't have to be too close to the hatch to catch them. So the um, the river podcasts I've done up to now have all been on quite urban rivers or semi-urban rivers. Whereas this is this is in the heart of the Peak District. It's absolutely beautiful. Got the big old stone bridge and the woodland and the bluebells are all out. But it's the same fish, just wild brown trout. Although it does hold a few big ones in here. I had some really big fish from a couple of spots. There's plenty of fly life in here as well. It's a great river because this, this bit fishes really well in August when it's very hot and everywhere else has slowed down a bit. This really comes alive because the water has got a lot of oxygen in and it's very cool. See anything rising? There's one. Oh, not a great deal. A little look further down. See, there's anything happening down here. So this this is what I'd call pocket water. It's lots and lots of boulders. So many different types of current, all swirling in different directions. But there's plenty of room, plenty of areas for the fish to get in and find little little areas where the current is pinched and there's going to be a good supply of food concentrated running past them. But I really can't see much rising and as much as I want to do a dry fly. Now oh, there's one that wasn't really a rise, that was a bulge under the surface. I'll try for it, but I'm wondering whether it's going to be better, not better uh, to put on a something like a snipe and purple, a little spider, and just fish it under the surface, just wet, but just a few inches down. And we'll give it a go. I'll just creep out on these rocks and see if I can position myself behind it. I think a spider is going to be better, but we'll give it a go with a. At least I'm in a good position to see things rising ahead of me. If anything else rises, I'll be able to see it. There's a tree on the back cast here, so I've just got to watch that. I don't want to tree it. It's going to be a tricky cast, actually, this. And there's another bulge. fishing up into this pocket water but uh, there's another rise just just a bit short of it there's another couple of feet upstream and I'll be over that one that's about right is he going to have it oh and there's another couple of rises upstream so they are there I'm just a bit short on that one still it's further upstream than you think Oh, he's come right out that time, took a, took a midge out of the air, and looks of it. It's very awkward, I'm having to cast over my left shoulder, so the wrong shoulder, and I'm also having to kind of curve the rod round a tree at the same time. But this is why I like this, this bit of river, it's proper wild fishing, and it's, it doesn't make it easy for you. And once you, everything's got to be just right. Your fly selection, your um, your presentation. There's all these little currents. It's going to drag the fly, so you've got to try and cast so you're getting a a drag-free drift. 
So even when you're catching these small wild brown trout, it's really rewarding. You've really had to think it through a little bit and solve the puzzle, as it were. And you feel like um, you've really achieved when you've you've caught something, and you've you then you deserve your half pint of ale in the Yorkshire Bridge afterwards. I've only got a short session today as well. I can only have about an hour on the river or so. Now I'm up close. Um, I reckon there's probably 20 fish rising or disturbing the surface anyway. Now, let me uh, creep up behind them. Get some line out. There's something like a little snipe and purple in a size 16 or 18 when they're feeding on midges. If you can just drift that over me, it's a cracking fly. Alright, check your back cast, David. So I'm just going to work up behind these fish. They are quite spooky here as well. Their instinct is finely tuned and as soon as they're uh, unsure about something that's happening, whether it's a, you know, you're seeing your fly line cast over them or just a shadow silhouetted against the, the skyline, that's enough to really put them down. Right, that's right on the, there we go, we're in. I was gonna, oh, he's off. That was right on the money and uh, took it straight away, but he's come off. And another one. What's that about 15 feet ahead of me? Let's try for him. Yep, we got him this time. There we go. He's smaller than the last one. Only a tiddler. Doesn't really warrant a net, but if you use the net, you don't have to touch him then. You can just unhook him in the net and drop him back. So he's only about six inches, something like that. They all count. A fish is a fish is a fish, as they say. All right. Cast over to the left into the bubble, bubble stream. There's lots of fish in this pool. It's just below the bridge. It's beautiful. It's an old, I call it Yorkshire Bridge. And there's a cracking run just beneath it. And I say there must be uh, got fields on my right and some sheep and the uh, old crumbling stone wall to my left. It's a picturesque kind of peak district scene, really. But it's absolutely teeming with fish. But you won't know until you get right up to them. They're not making big rises, it's very subtle rises, but I think, looking at it now, again, there's well in excess of 20 fish rising in front of me. So I'm going to go a bit further up with it, without falling in. And I do have to confess that I wasn't recording the podcast, but I was having a, a fish on my local stream last week, and I went completely in... And I wasn't using a wading stick. And again, I'm navigating here without a wading stick. A bit silly, really, but there you go. Someone's got to do these things. Okay. Just creeping up, and then I'm going to stop for a minute, and we'll see where they are. And then it's a matter of working out how you can get your cast to the fish. You only get one chance, really. As soon as you put your line over these, they're, they'll sink down. I'm getting plenty of rises to the fly. And, oh, he came and had a look at that one, and he, he just saw the swirl as he, as he turned. Oh, there really is a lot of fish here. Oh, I missed another. Ah. So 
So I can't really see my fly here, but what I'm doing is striking at anything that looks like it's risen at mine. So I'm casting across the stream here, but I'm still getting a good you know, four or five feet of, of drift before the the fly starts to, or the line starts to want to drag the fly. And if you, you can put a little upstream mend in as well, it's part of the cast. Put a bend in the line and you get a bit of extra drift then. Right, I'm going to move from here. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish off. I've had a couple on the dry. I've had plenty of little rises at the fly and swirls at it. I think what I'm going to do is have 10 minutes on a North Country spider just to finish off. There we go, so I've got a North Country spider, size 16. Snipe and purple, and um, just tie this on, and we'll give this a crack. Right, so I'm going to fish almost start off flush up to the bridge, and the back on the bridge, cast out slightly across, reach back, and then the spider will drift down in a more natural fashion over the top of them. I could also probably do with a slightly longer rod for doing this, just to keep the fly line off the water as much as possible. The more you can reduce the drag of the line pulling the fly around, the better. Right, I'm just going to head downstream a touch, and I think we'll make that the last. There's a few olives hatching again. I can't quite seem to just get this fly onto the into that bubble stream out there I want it. I'm just gonna have to wade out a bit further, I think. And if you hear a big if you hear a big splash, you know what's happened. There's a fish just bulging ever so close in. I've just popped a very short cast over it. Oh, another pull, another pluck on the fly, and it's it's not taking it. That's two plucks I've had on the spider, and neither time they've fully committed. I don't think it's been more of a an aggressive kind of pluck as opposed to a, a feeding instinct. <laughs> They're all rising downstream of me now, in amongst the rocks. The trees are still haven't got the leaves on fully. It's, I think this patch of cold weather we have has just pushed everything back a touch, but it's due to get a bit milder next week, and I think the uh, once it gets warmer towards the end of the week, it's really going to kick off properly. Well, there's no shortage of fish rising here. Right, a couple more casts and I think we'll call it a day. I've only got a short session, so I think we've had, we've had two two to the net. And I've lost two or three and I've had probably three or four rises to the dry and then I've had a couple of good plucks on the spider but nothing connected. That's a, a nice short session really. Go on then, we'll make this the last one, I think. Now, I'll call it a day I'm going to wind in. So thanks ever so much again for listening to the podcast. Um, if you're interested in any of the flies I've been using, the barbless Wild River flies, the web address is shop.peaksflyfishing.com. And the, uh, the web address for the coaching website is www.peaksflyfishing.com. Thanks for listening, and um, hopefully the next podcast will be from the River Y. Off up to Scotland for a couple of days salmon fishing, so I'm going to try and uh, do a bit of recording up there as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.